Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The text for this morning's message is Luke chapter 1, uh, 57 through 80. Come to church today and you might have thought maybe we were in Advent. Uh, but we are not in Advent. This is the celebration of the Nativity of John the Baptist. And there are two reasons given in the early church as far back as the 4th century why we can celebrate the Nativity of John the Baptist on June 24. The church had already established the celebration of Christmas on December 25th. They established that tradition because it was believed that Jesus would have been conceived on the same day that he died. That was a tradition of the prophets. That first Good Friday, the day that Jesus died, was March 25th, and so nine months later is December 25th. In Luke 1, we know that the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. The conception of Jesus is presumed to have corresponded with that visitation. So John would have been born six months before Jesus. Also, John spoke as recorded in John chapter 3, verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. And it is in this time of year, in the year, in the time of year when we celebrate the nativity of John, that the days have started to decrease in length. And it is in the time of the year of the celebration of Jesus' birth, the days have started to increase. So there is quite a bit of symbolism that is built into the, the celebration of even the Nativity of John the Baptist. These are good reasons why we can celebrate this feast day. We know that John the Baptist came before Jesus. And we know that he had a purpose of pointing to Jesus, who is greater than himself. In our Old Testament lesson, we hear these words. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Isaiah spoke this prophecy when the people of Israel were experiencing their Babylonian captivity, and they were on the verge of getting out of that captivity. They were literally going to cross the desert and enter back into the promised land, the home that the Lord had given to them. But before that happened, the way would have to be prepared, and the path to the promised land made straight and level. <coughs> This foreshadows the ministry of John the Baptist. And in this event, Isaiah prophesies regarding the purpose of John the Baptist. John the Baptist is given by God to prepare the people of Jesus' day for the preaching and teaching and the dying and being buried and rising again that Jesus would say and do. Ultimately, Jesus would lead these people to the kingdom of God but it would be on a road that is made straight. It would be on a road that is made straight through repentance and forgiveness. For this is the only way to the real promised land. Outside our building today, there is a road. I know. It is an impassable road. <coughs> But the construction crews are working to smooth it out and make it passable. Until their work is done, the road is full of low places and high places. It has rocks and mud and water. And until the road is fixed, the cars won't pass. Until the road is fixed, it cannot be used as a passageway to get to where you want to go. In the Bible, we often see the image or idiom of Mountains and valleys and crooked paths littered with stones and rocks. 
as a result of sin in a person's life, before the Lord leads us home, he must, like those construction workers, deal with the sin that creates the ruggedness and obstacles to the Lord's leadership in your life and mine. You must deal with the impassable road of our hearts. John the Baptist prepared the way of the Lord by preaching and teaching and baptizing those who would experience the ministry of Jesus as he walked on the earth. He brought many people to repentance and forgiveness through the preaching of God's word and the giving of God's word and baptism. These people were then ready to receive Jesus and hear what he said. They were ready to receive the kingdom of God in their lives. This preparation was necessary as the word made flesh began his ministry on the earth. But it is also necessary in every human life. If any of us are to receive the Lord Jesus and enter into the kingdom of God, the way of the Lord must be made straight, the low places raised, and the high places made low. There is a similarity also. One of the things I notice in the early spring are the activities of farmers. Farmers have a responsibility to care for the land. And they, in fact, are the ones who are most concerned about the health of the land. Without the land, there is no crop. And so farmers test the soil to find out what it needs. They spread the right kind of fertilizer with the correct nutrients. They till the land so that the ground will receive the seed. And I'm sure that there's much more that I don't see that a farmer does to make the land suitable to receive the seed. It's hard work, it's hard preparation, but it is necessary preparation in order to produce the crop. This is what the Lord does. He does this to you and to me in our hearts. He prepares the way He cultivates the heart of every human who will come to Him. If it is to produce the fruit that the Lord intends, the heart must be prepared. So God's Word goes out to a heart that is secure in its sin, to a heart that says, I'm not a sinner, to a heart that cannot recognize sin for what it is. God's Word goes out to convict and break down that heart. It is an arrogant and ignorant heart. It is a heart that is not ready to produce fruit. An arrogant, ignorant heart must be humbled. And the Lord will accomplish that task with His very Word. He will make the low places higher and the high places lower. God's Word also goes out to a heart in turmoil. It goes out to a heart that is mired in guilt, and it tells that heart that their sins are forgiven. The Word brings relief that says the guilt price has been paid. And this word is for the one who believes that he or she is in a hopeless situation and cannot help himself. God comes and gives that heart the very help it needs. It's the help the forgiveness of sin. Without this help, without this transformation, the road into the kingdom of God is crooked and rough. But with the preparation of God's word, that heart is prepared to produce fruit that God intends to live in the kingdom of God. There's a story that I, I enjoy. In fact, I probably have used this before. But I'm going to use it again because it applies very well to today's text. It comes from a book called The Hammer of God. And in this book there are three stories. And in one of those stories, there's a young pastor, Friedfeld, who is talking to an older, more experienced pastor. I just want you to know from the beginning, sir, that I am a believer, the young Pastor Friedfeld said to the older pastor. So you are a believer. I'm glad to hear that. What do you believe in? Friedfeld stared dumbfounded at his superior. Sir, I am simply saying that I am a believer. Yes, I hear that, my boy. But what is it that you believe in? Friedfeld was almost speechless. But don't you know, sir, what it means to believe? That is a word which can stand for things that differ greatly, my boy. I ask only what it is that you believe in. In Jesus, of course, answered Friedfeld, <coughs> raising his voice. I mean, 
I mean that I have given him my heart. Do you consider that something to give him? By this time, Friedfeld was almost in tears. But sir, if you do not give your heart to Jesus, you cannot be saved. <coughs> you are right, my boy. And it is just as true that if you think you are saved because you give Jesus your heart, you will not be saved. You see, my boy, he continued reassuringly, as he continued to look at the young pastor's face, in which uncertainty and resentment were shown in a struggle for the upper hand, it is one thing to choose Jesus as one's Lord and Savior, to give him one's heart and commit oneself to him, and that he now accepts one into this, his little flock. It is a very different thing to believe in him as the Redeemer of sinners, of whom one is chief. One does not choose a Redeemer for oneself, you understand, nor give one's heart to him. The heart is a rusty old can on a junkie, a fine birthday gift indeed, but a wonderful Lord passes by and has mercy on the wretched tin can, sticks his walking cane through it and rescues it from the junk pile and takes it home with him. That is how it is. This is the condition of the unprepared human heart. This is the condition of your heart and mine. You need the word of God spoken for you in the right way at the right time. And when God's word comes, your heart is changed and transformed. When God's word comes and changes your heart, then the Lord does come to dwell in your life. This activity of the Lord, this preparing is something that goes on daily for all of us. We need God's word to change our hearts daily. Things happen in this life. Sometimes we need to be broken down and brought low because we think too highly of ourselves. Sometimes we need to be lifted up with a word of forgiveness because we know the hurts and the challenges of our sins. And all of this is God's work in your life today to bring you into everlasting life. You are being prepared to enter into paradise, into your eternal home with all who believe in Jesus, all who have received the preparation of the heart, the redemption of the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand.